Hello everyone and welcome to my channel this is the 24th part of what if Deku was Sanji's reincarnation, my heroes reborn, the author of this great fan if I see is Emma Ivoli links to them and original story in the description. Chapter 24, Stain Izuku had turned everything off during the awkwardness of Mashireo's arrival. He really shouldn't have, but the explanation of it all was kind of too much. Granted he wouldn't have been surprised to find Zoro doing the same thing in his past life. But the point was he had to reactivate it. Now he was ready. He looked at Mashireo and Todoroki, both of them were ready for a fight, he would have looked at Toru, but well, he had activated his observation hockey and it was better to not look at her at the moment. It was also not a good time to tell her that with observation hockey he could see her. He took another breath and kept out the pervert side of his personality out of his head and ran towards Stain ready for his fight. Stain watched at the two teens ran towards him. He noticed that Izuku was the faster of the two the two. While Stain was distracted by the two, Todoroki froze the ground in a way that created an ice ramp that allowed the hero known as Native to slide down to his protection. Izuku managed to get a good hit in. However he senses that Stain was about to nick his arm and managed to move out the way in time. He's too fast. Fought Stain with a scowl. However for him Mashireo wouldn't fast enough combined with the fact he had to fight in his school uniform meant that he was having a big problem with maneuverability. Plus it didn't help that thanks to his past life his abilities were more towards power instead of speed. While he could get, get hit hits in, dodging was really his own defense. While he managed to get a good hit in, Stain managed to cut him. Damn it! Yelled Mashireo, clutching his arm. You only got here by luck, it's a shame. Said Stain licking the blood off the knife. That was when Mashireo felt like he couldn't move and collapsed. Mashireo! Called out Toru. She managed to grab him and got him out of the way. However Izuku noticed the truth of Stain's attack, it wasn't cutting someone it. So that's it. Said Izuku, your quirk is that you paralyze someone by swallowing their blood. Stain glared at Izuku. Besides the fact you can't move are you okay? Asked Toru. Yeah, I think so. Said Mashireo. Look at them all. However that was when he had to dodge a fire attack from Todoroki. He's using his left side. Fought Izuku. Followed by a party cannonball, hitting Stain right in the chest. However he recovered and threw knife where the party cannon figured from. Missed me. Called out Toru from a different direction. Stain however decided to throw a knife at Todoroki, it did hit his cheek. But before he could do anything else, Stain had to dodge another attack from Izuku. In turn Izuku dodging every single move that Stain tried to hit him with. Ida continued to watch. Stop this now. Why are you doing this? This isn't your fight. It's between me and him. I inherited my brother's name. The hero killer is mine. Said Ida. Ida. Sighed Izuku. Does Izuku need to call you out on your hypocrisy again? Asked Toru taking out twin hand party cannons which bladed strange balls of confetti. She's right. You can fight my battles but I can't fight yours? Asked Izuku. Technically you're being a hypocrite too. Said Mashireo. I know. Sighed Izuku with a sweat drop. We're your friend. And friends fight for each other. Said Toru. So get your head out of your ass already. Said Izuku slipping in into Sanji mode. Ida looked at Izuku who slipped out of Sanji mode in embarrassment. Sorry, it just happens sometimes. Said Izuku, I didn't mean it like that. Ida side having gotten used to Izuku's personality swings the last couple weeks. Izuku noticed that Stain was about to hit Todoroki with some throwing knives and took the hit for him hitting him in the arm. Midoriya! Said Todoroki. This is nothing. Said Izuku. Todoroki gritted his teeth. That might be. But we can't risk you getting hit. Said Mashireo. He's right. 
Please don't take any hits for anyone else. Said Toru, promise me that. Izuku began to sweat. I don't think I can. Sad Izuku. However before Stain could do anything else Toru shot more attack at him with the weird weapons. Stain decided to try to attack the invisible girl by throwing weapons at her. Which didn't work, at least he didn't think it worked, he couldn't tell. Sorry, but I'm ambiguously psychic right now. Said Toru from a completely different direction, I haven't figured out if I am or not. Stain decided to ignore her, not completely, just what she was saying. That was when Mashareo noticed something. He was able to move his body. It's wearing off. He said. He must be blood type O, thought Stain. Can you guys move? Asked Toru. No. Said Ida. Can't. Said Native. Izuku began to think. Either the more people affected the shorter time it takes or the blood type. Said Izuku. Stain flinched when he said that. IT's blood type. Definitely blood type. Said Toru. Stain glared at where heard the voice, but that was the problem with fighting an invisible girl, she probably moved since she said that. I'm type O, said Mashareo. I'm type A, said Ida. Type B, said Native. So that's how to works. Not as impressive as I thought. Said Todoroki. Stain glared at the assembled teens. I have an ide idea how to handle him for a bit. Said Mashareo, but one of you is going to hate it. Todoroki was confused, while Izuku sighed know who he was referring to. Oh really? Said Stain, what would be the reason why someone would hate it? Mashareo took a breath and thought about the last three days. Sure sure Hokuden. He called out sending a blast of red energy at Stain sending him flying. Stain quickly recovered however. Why would someone hate that move? Said Stain getting up. Wait. Was that weaponized depression? Asked Toru. No. Lied Mashareo. Mashareo could feel the invisible girl's gaze. Look it doesn't matter what the attack was, we have to remain focused. Said Izuku. He now realized it was only a matter of time before she knew what powered hell memories. Stain was about to attack Todoroki with his sword, however Izuku kicked it away. You're nowhere close to the strongest swordsman I ever seen. Said Izuku. Will you stop this? Yelled Ida managing to get up. Ida. Said Toru. Ida could feel the invisible girl at his side. Please. Said Toru, your arms really messed up. I don't need to fight. Said Ida, this is my fight. We know. Muttered Izuku in Sanji mode. And I have to be the one to fight him, because I can't let you get hurt because of me. Said Ida. I haven't gotten hurt yet though. Said Toru. I know that, but still. Said Ida. He glared harshly at Stain. Then activated his engines and used Recipro Burst, aka the high speed move that overheats his engines, Stain kicking him away. Ida! yelled out Izuku. Todoroki, Midoriya, Hagakure, Ojiro. This has nothing to do with you. Said Ida. We know. Said Mashareo. I feel like kicking your ass so much right now. Said Izuku in Sanji mode. I didn't mean it like. I can let you get hurt anymore. Said Ida. You can't change your true nature in just a few minutes. Muttered Stain, you put your desires over being a hero. You have the sick sickness that ruined the name hero, so I must teach you a lesson. There's something seriously wrong with you. Said Mashareo. Don't listen to him. Said Todoroki. No he's right, I have no right to call myself a hero anymore. Said Ida. What? Said Izuku. No. Said Toru. But I can't just give up. If do then the name Ingenium will die. Said Ida. 
Indeed, he had taken on that name, the name of his brother. Stain was about to attack Ida once again however Todoroki sent out his flame at him. Izuku now would be a good time to stop holding back and finish off the guy. Said Mashareo. What? Said Izuku. Oh yeah why haven't you been using that other kind of hockey? Asked Toru. Izuku froze when she said that. Why haven't I been using armament hockey? Thought Izuku starting to sweat. Stain noticed Izuku's indecision and actually managed to stab him. But Toru managed to shoot him with the party cannon to distract him. Okay. I think there's something wrong with Izuku. Called out Aiko. What? Asked Mashareo. Aiko. You're here? Asked Toru. I've been here since Izuku sent out the distress beacon. Said Aiko, I kept quiet since you know, all of you have seen my funny and irreverent side instead of my working persona. Toru fire off another party cannon blast at Stain to make sure he was thoroughly distracted from the teens. But I couldn't help to speak now, because I can tell something is going on with Izuku. Said Aiko, I mean we all know however overpowered Izuku is. None of the other four answered, with Izuku blushing. He is holding back, and I don't think it's consciously either. Said Aiko, this will be a problem, but just hold on for a few more minutes. Trust me. Someone is coming. How do you, do you know? Asked Todoroki. We don't know each other, but proper introductions are for later. I'm going to shut up now. But just letting you know, the one that I know is coming, he's not happy, let's just say two of you are going to be in so much trouble when he gets here. Said Aiko. Ida looked at Izuku who was still recovering from the attack from Stain realized something, he couldn't use his engine. Todoroki, do you think you can regulate the temperature? Asked Ida. With my left side, no. Said Todoroki. Then I need you to freeze my legs for me. Said Ida. Todoroki looked at Ida confused. I need you to freeze my legs while making sure you don't plug the exhaust. Said Ida. However that was when Stain decided to toss a knife at Todoroki, however Mashareo was the one who ended up taking the hit. Sure sure Hokuden. He managed to get out once again slamming Stain with the attack. Mashareo. Yelled Izuku. It's fine. He said. Why won't you stay down? Yelled Stain tossing another knife. However it was Izuku who took the hit this time. However the part that took the hit was black and the knife just bounced off. What? Said Stain. Izuku tried to mentally list off what he could do. I know I can do use both kinds of hockey and full cowling, is that I can do? He thought. Izuku now's not that a good time to be in your head. Said Mashareo. I know. Said Izuku snapping out of. He once again activated full cowling while covering his legs in hockey. However at the same time Ida could feel that his engines had cooled enough he could use his strongest attack. Both of them jumped into the air hitting Stain hard. I won't let you get away. Yelled Ida. Stain tried to ready another attack however Ida managed to give him another harsh kick. Todoroki launched a stream of fire at Stain. Sure sure Hokuden. Called out Mashareo launching the attack at him. Party finale. Called out Toru shooting a large gun that exploded in a large blast of light and confetti. Ida found himself falling thanks to engines one of again giving out, out, however, Todoroki managed to use his to create a ramp to catch him. They also saw that Stain was clearly knocked out, dangling on a piece of the ice. You think he's knocked out? Asked Mashareo. Looks like it said Izuku. But we should tie him up and get him to the street. Said Todoroki. Toru proceed a rope from somewhere. Todoroki just looked at her. Where did you get that? Asked Todoroki. He heard her hum I don't know and assumed she was shrugging. They managed to tie up stay and his native was able to move. Toru managed to get her clothes back on. Well I should go back to Yuzu. 
She's probably worried about me. Said Toru. Are you sure? Asked Izuku. Didn't get injured. Said Toru, plus. I can lay down his punishment later. Ida began to sweat as the invisible girls did that creepy thing with her voice again. Yeah, that's going to cause even more problems. Said Aiko. Why? Asked Toru. Hibiki knows you're here. Said Aiko, if you try to avoid him you're just going to get into even more trouble. Oh. Said Toru. Don't worry. Mr. I wandered throughout Japan for the last three days without asking for help is in just as much trouble. Said Aiko. Uh. Said Mashireo. Why didn't you call for help? Asked Izuku with a sweat drop. Or use either button. Said Aiko. Mashireo sighed. Who should drag him? Asked Mashireo. I'll do it. Said Ida. Your arms are pretty messed up. Said Mashireo. I'll do it. Said Mashireo. No. Said Izuku. Izuku was the one to end up dragging him. As they dragged him away. Izuku began to think. During the fight I forgot about Diable Jam. He thought, why is that happening? What are you doing here boy? Asked a voice. Izuku looked up and saw Gran Torino. Gran Torino. Cried Izuku. However Gran Torino kicked him in the face. I thought I told you to stay on the bullet train. Yelled Gran Torino. Who's this? Asked Todoroki. Gran Torino, Torino, the hero I'm interning with. Sighed Izuku. That was when they all heard music that was slowly growing closer and louder. Time to face the music. Said Aiko, oh, lucky pun. They saw as Hibiki came down from the sky. He turned off his music player and removed his headphone. Mashireo Ojiro. Toru Hagokure. Said Hibiki. Hibiki. Both of them froze at their counselor. You getting lost is not your fault, the tracker I sent got lost in the mail and he didn't get it. But that doesn't excuse you wandering around Japan for the last three days. I'm sorry. Said Mashireo. Also, you better have a good explanation why you just disappeared. Said Hibiki, I'd understand if was after the emergency beacon was sent, but before. Sorry. Said Toru. Gran Torino stared at Hibiki. Orchestra rave. Said Hibiki. Ah, so you're the special counselor they hired. Said Gran Torino. Native looked confused. These three were attacked by pre-stress. Explained Hibiki. That explains so much. Said Native staring at the three. What's that supposed to mean? Asked Izuku slipping in Sanji mode. That was when several heroes showed up. They were surprised by the hero killer tied up and unconscious. They called the police and an ambulance. As they waited Ida knew what he had to do. Everyone I'm sorry. Said Ida bowing in apology, I was just so filled with anger that I let my judgment cloud my thoughts. You got hurt because of me. It's fine. I should have been attention to you too. Said Izuku, I should have noticed how bad you were feeling. Do you know why I asked you make that promise? Said Toru, because I knew you were going to get hurt. Ida froze when she said that. Just remember you have a lot of people who care about you. Said Toru. Yeah. Said Ida wiping away his tears. Don't be, be that way, you're the class rep said Todoroki. Pull yourself together. However that was when suddenly one of the Nomu, which had wings suddenly swooped in. Watch out! Yelled Gran Torino. Izuku activated observation hockey and planned to get whoever it might attack out of the way, however when he looked at the Nomu he froze. He had never seen anything like it. Its aura was sick and twisted, almost like it was in constant pain. 
Not to mention that part of it, somehow felt extremely familiar, but he couldn't put his finger on it. However the shock of everything let the Nomu grab him. Everyone was shocked. Habiki. Said Aiko. Don't need to tell me twice. Said Hibiki putting on his headphone. However it was bleeding, and it blood ended up on the cheek of one of the pros that had arrived. Not only that but Stain was conscious. He had gotten free thanks to a hidden knife, and licked the blood off the hero's face, paralyzing the Nomu. The name hero has lost all meaning in this society. Yelled Stain as he ran towards the Nomu. He then stabbed it in the brain, which easier than it sounds as its brain was exposed, killing it. Everything I do is to create a stronger society. Said Stain. Izuku was breathing heavily after the shock of seeing Nomu's aura. But he did recover. However Stain was holding him down. That was also when Endeavor showed up. He saw that Stain was standing there after chasing down the Nomu. Endeavor was ready to fight him, however Gran Torino stopped him because of Izuku. You false hero. Said Stain getting up and letting Izuku and looking at Endeavor. His mask falling off reveling his true face, it was quite terrifying and not only that but there was just something else about him that was terrifying and made it so that everyone was terrified. He continued to walk towards them. But it was clear he was struggling. I'll make this right. These streets must run red with the blood of the hypocrites. Hero. I will reclaim that word. Come on. Just try and stop me you fakes. There is only one man I'll let kill me. He is a true hero. All might is worthy. He yelled out. Then suddenly he passed out while still standing. Everyone just stared at him, unsure how to respond. It was a broken rib that pierced his lung, he wasn't dead, but he was unconscious. With that the hero killer was finally stopped, thankfully. That will be it for this part. I hope everyone enjoyed if you did please leave a like and comment if you want part 25. If you want to hear more from me subscribe I hope to see you all in the next one.